All right, my students. So we're beginning to look at vector fields. Uh, I wouldn't say you would treat this little mini lesson as an introduction, but the type of examples are definitely the type of examples you would be using uh, while we're introducing the topic. And I've captured some images um, to use here just because uh, physically by hand drawing vector fields is not a good use of your time. So the particular vector field here, um, capital F vector of uh, two variables, X and Y, and then I have it written in component form. You could also write this vector field, capital F of X, Y is equal to X, I plus Y, J. If you use the IJ form or notation of vectors more frequently. And, and if you're sitting in a linear algebra class, you might actually write it this way as a reminder. And depending on um, the subject involved, the particular notation might become more relevant there. So this particular um, set of vectors laid out like a field, and I'm gonna uh, ask you to think of a field almost like blades of grass, um, literally a field that way. Um, it is not drawn to scale, and it certainly isn't comprehensive. It does not cover every possibility. What they've done is they've drawn um, a number of representative vectors, and it looks like about maybe 16 in each quadrant, so that'd be 64 altogether. But remember, there's infinitely many points, and every point generates a vector. So if I were to want to generate the vector at the point 1, comma 1, this just says, hey, the x component is the x-coordinate. And the y component of the vector is the y-coordinate of that point. If I really were to draw that vector at the point 1, 1 here, it should extend to about here, because that's where two and two is. So I want you to see that they have not drawn these vectors to scale. What they've actually done is scaled them down so you can see where smaller ones and larger ones would be. A very common practice. Sometimes they use colors. Um, uh, warmer or redder colors are, are representing uh, longer vectors, bigger magnitude. Cooler colors, such as blue, might be shorter vectors. This one has just scaled it down to show, hey, that's a small vector, that's a bigger vector. Um, notationally, it's pretty common to define a vector field. The number of variables will tell you the number of components. And each component can have the variables x and y in them. Now, since this is not a very exciting example, we don't really see the need for the x and y notation since we just have x where x is and y where y is. So let's look at the next example. All right. So we have our vector field Some function m of x, y is a notation used in many textbooks in the Western world. n of x, y. And we can see here that if we were to want to find the vector at the point uh, right here, at the point 7, 2, so what is the vector that is represented at the point seven comma two? Well, according to this definition, the I component or the X part of the vector is the Y coordinate here, which is the number two. And the second component of the vector is the negative of the X value plus the Y value. So that'd be negative seven plus two 
that gives us 2 comma negative 5. Now, can you see it? There were two variables here. This is a function of two variables. This first component didn't just have x values in it. So I'm in my math robot mode. I'm plugging in values. I'm substituting values. What I have here is a vector that should go right to unit and then down five units. It should look something more or less like this. That should be my vector there. Very clearly, this vector does not go all the way uh, two units right and five units down. It's been scaled down. But you can kind of get the idea for how this works. Um, if we were studying um, another subject matter such as, uh, uh, well, fluid flow, we could say, well, if we began here, we might be looking at some sort of a, a spiral motion that expands outward as we follow these vectors. But if I started here, the fluid flow may take me in this direction. So the field represents sort of what if scenarios if you began at various places. Electricity, magnetism, Uh, wind, these are all um, physical things that can be studied where vector fields would be greatly involved. It's pretty common to find um, differential equations not too far behind. And people that have studied even AP calculus have been given little previews of this. One more quick example. The vector field can be also in three dimensions. Um, we, in my class, will not attempt to uh, draw these three-dimensional vector fields. You, you can kind of see that this one has sort of a, maybe a circulation pattern of some sort represented here. But notationally, what happens is um, the vector field now has three possible input variables. So you have your function m that represents the x component, and it could actually have any of the three variables. Your y component is n, which again, you could find by any of the three variables. And they skip the letter of the alphabet O because O looks like a zero, and for a variety of other reasons, to P, X, Y, and Z. That only makes sense in the, maybe the English alphabet, not in other alphabets. And I didn't provide the algebra for this because I just want you to know that we're gonna be looking primarily at the algebra. This is where our interest will lie, not the visual. But in the real world, the visual plays a significant role, okay? Next, we'll begin working at uh, looking at different types of um, vector field concepts, focusing primarily on the algebraic, not the visual. Till later.